Um, just want to thank Kevin, you know, his family. I think the personal relationship that I have with Kevin uh, goes well beyond uh, football. Uh, we know that the, there's a business side of this, and uh, sometimes, you know, you have to make tough decisions. It certainly was was one of them. You know, Rand and I are trying to um, continue to grow the team and continue to do what we think is going to be best now and, and in the long run uh, to, to add to our roster, to strengthen our roster. Um, and this was an opportunity to do that. Um, you know, again, just can't thank Kevin enough for the personal um, relationship and you know what he's meant to this organization uh, on the field, off the field. Uh, these things are, are never easy. Um, but hopefully if you if you handle them with, with class and integrity and respect and you know honesty, you know, hopefully it, it works out for everybody. So um, you know, we, we have a we, we have a great opportunity coming off a bye, you know, to, to win a game at home and, and that's what we're prepared to do. That's what we're absolutely uh, going to do. Um, so I'll uh, be happy to take any questions. What was the timeline on the buyer? Was it something that kind of no, came okay, about? No, those, you know, I mean, all these things that we do and these transactions, things are, are going to remain um, in-house. Um, took took some calls and, um, you know, that that's how things, you know, transpire and you continue to talk and, uh, you know, finally able to get a deal done. That's, that's what we did. You mentioned uh, strengthening the roster, Mike. Obviously, this weakens your roster in the, for this season. So yeah, you can't have it both ways, Joe. You know, you can't, you know, try and do, uh, you know, ultimately do what we think is in the best interest of the football team. And, uh, you know, no, nobody, not one person is going to replace Kevin. Um, we know that. Um, excited to add Terrell. Excited to take a look at, you know, Elijah and some of the pieces that we have there. Um, but, no, we're not going to sit there and think that we're going to, replace Kevin Byard um, today when we go down there. It's, it's nobody's intention. So, you know, we, we made a decision in which we felt like it'll be, you know, clearly second guess. That's that's why you have a job. That's why, you know, all you guys are, are here. And so these things aren't easy. And we're, we're trying to, to look at what draft capital we have um, and, and, and try to uh, come up with a solution for it. Obviously What's not being over. Why, why are you guys all yelling today? <laughs> With the season obviously not being over and you guys still mm. in the run, you trade a captain away. Mm. How do you go back to that locker room and tell those guys that, you know, winning is still the, the ultimate goal right, because right that, here? Right you know, now. we have a job to do, and I understand that there's, you know, I, I have a job. Everybody else has a job. We, we need to do that. Um, it's what we've always done. We'll compete. You know, they have – Sure, everybody has their own personal feelings on it, just like I do. Um, ask that they, uh, whether they agree with it or disagree with it, ask that they respect it, um, because that's, you know, that's what that's how we've done things here. And again, w when you make a bunch of connections with them, and and the players, you know, sometimes it's, um, it, it just, you know, it goes. Uh, the, there's a business side of it, and there's a there's a personal side of it. How do you, that how do you, how do you feel that void from the locker room perspective and the leadership that, uh, that Kevin brought to this team? One of you guys that step up and, you know, again, Kevin was, uh, was a captain here. That's as clear as communication and, you know, but, but guys will step up and, you know, pick up, uh, pick up whatever void was there and, you know, keep moving along. Does that signal you're open for business? Well, I think that, you know, Rand and I will always look uh, at opportunities to strengthen um, the roster and the growth of it and the ability to to add pieces or draft capital or whatever. I think everybody um, will always listen to anything that someone might have to say. I don't know if there's anything imminent. I'm just... A lot of a lot of people talk at this time of the year and before the draft and before the trade deadline. Could the outcome of this next game might have a bearing on that? No, no, I don't think so. Do you I mean, not in my point? mind. I mean, I think we're gonna try like hell to to go and prepare and win the football game. 
and you know whatever else may happen I don't think would have a bearing how much did the first six games have a bearing on the decision it, to it, it didn't not in my mind so focused on the Falcons and, and that's where we need to go Mike since we won't get to talk to him how did KB take it I'm not going to speak for KB I just he's a first class individual um had an unbelievable conversation with it. Uh, clearly, was uh, for for me, you know, just anxious to have that phone call, and you know, I talked to him again this morning. So, I'll let him handle that. You so, if you're no, five and one, and Bayard has three picks, I mean, we're it's just a game? hypothetical situation. I, I'm going to take this as the last question. I'm going to say, and then we're going to focus on the Falcons. I'm thank KB as many times as I possibly can. Um, you know, we, we, we have to, to get back after this bye. We, we got to come out here with some juice. This is, you know, KB will tell you this is professional football. And and we have a job as players and coaches and to, to prepare and to get ready. Uh, and that's what we have to do. But you just said the record didn't have a bearing on the move. So that, right, that so I wasn't talking in a hypothetical that. situation. We're not five and one, we're two and four. So, you know, we got to find a way to win a, win a game. Like that's that's what it is. So the what does quarterback situation look like now? Well, we'll Ryan won't practice today, and um, you know we'll see where he is at the end of the week. And I would imagine that uh, you know if Ryan can't play, I think I would anticipate both of those quarterbacks playing in the football game. But Ryan, you know, is out of his off of his roller or walker or whatever he had, and uh, you know we'll see where he is at the end of the week. Both of them, like you said you'd anticipate both of them. You'd have a plan for both of them to play. I said I'd anticipate both of them to play. Yep. Make sure you got that, Joe. Like, as somebody who played this game, putting yourself kind of in those shoes, how does the team view the move that was made yesterday as not kind of admitting from the front office that they're giving up on the season? Well, we'll we'll, we'll never give up on on anything, and we're going to prepare. With the roster and the guys that we have on the active roster and the guys on the practice squad, we'll ask them to prepare as starters. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to speak speak for the team. I'm going to try to coach them and, and try to get them ready to go. You mentioned leadership. Uh, how confident are you that you have the quality leadership in the locker room that you need going forward? I'm, I'm confident that we have the leadership in the locker room going forward. And you know, we had... Six captains voted and other guys received votes. And really at this point in time, anybody that comes to work with a great attitude, a willingness to improve, uh, and the, the ability to play uh, extremely hard would have an opportunity to be a leader. You mentioned both quarterbacks could play. What will go into the decision on which guy will start? We'll see what the game plan looks like. See what, uh, see, you know, first of all, see where Ryan's at and then you know, talk about, you know, what we may want to do, you know, throughout the course of the game. What's the benefit of, of both guys, Mike? Um, are you trying just to get a look at both, or do you see benefit in playing both? Yeah, I don't, you know, until we know, you know, Ryan's availability, you know, I'm just telling you to, if Ryan can't play, I'd expect both of them to play. When you say that you guys need to avoid of drop back passing, it, it, isn't there a necessity for an element of drop back passing in the NFL in 2023? And is that an indictment of how you built protection? No, it's um, not. Not again, just a true drop back game. You know, I think that uh, outside of two minute and third down, I think you, you know, probably be surprised at the actual numbers. That, that are there in a seven step drop, you know, full field progression, three level route, you know, 15 yard in cut on the backside. Like may, maybe I'm mistaken, but, you know, I just, I guess that's what I meant. You know, I mean, you're going to have to throw the football, right? But just making sure that, you know, there are favorable ways to do it and, uh, you know, we, we have to be able to, to do that. Still room for, for five step in there? Yeah, I mean, whether it's quick game, it's play action, it, you know, empty, you know, 
screens, keepers, like those are all part of, you know, the, the first and second down plan. And then, you know, being able to, to mix in, you know, drop back and seeing, seeing how, you know, you can hold up. How about the left tackle situation? You've had time to think about it. You got Petit Ferrer, you got Andre Dillard. What's that going to look like going forward? Yeah, uh, Nick will be out there today with the with the ones, and um, you know Dre needs to prepare as a starter and be ready to play both sides. And you know, when he gets an, another opportunity, uh, take advantage of it. Is there a chance that you look at, at Trayland's doing anything? okay? Yeah, yeah. A couple, how he coming along, and how optimistic are you about him? Uh, he practiced uh, full all last week. But yeah, was to Skoronsky potential? Oh, uh, right now Pete's gonna play left guard. How much of that decision in place it was how much you liked the way you ran the football when Nick was in there the last game? Um, I think that's part of it. I think it's just you know given given Nick an opportunity, I think he took advantage of the you know, sample size that he had there at the uh, second half of uh, the Ravens game. So he earned uh, some more opportunities. Why not play Peter at left tackle? Why, why not? Because Peter uh, is going to be at left guard. And I think that's going to be a really, really good position for him. How did uh, Levis and Willis look last week at, during the bye in the practices working with the starting unit? I thought they looked good. I thought they were efficient. I thought they were excited to be out there. We got some good work in, good throwing in. So, you know, another couple of days of practice and then getting some, some, some much needed uh, speed work. What is the challenge then splitting the reps with the first team with two guys at the same time? I don't know. I've never played quarterback or split reps. Just, you know, they were going to have to both prepare and be ready to go. I just, you know, and I know that they both will be, just like they did last week in practice and, you know, what it'll be like this week and until, you know, see if Ryan's healthy. What is, how's he played this year? How does he maybe fit into what you I mean, I think in the, the, the games that uh, I was able to watch, uh, I thought he was active. I thought he still ran well. I'm excited to see his, um, you know, versatility. I thought he tackled well. I thought he stayed on his feet and tackled. I didn't see him flopping around on the ground. You know, they didn't didn't blitz him much, you know, so didn't didn't see that from him. I know that he's done those types of things in the past and you know, when we've evaluated him. So um, showed up with a great attitude when I saw him this morning. Molden Burks, uh, Tart, back to practice? Uh, yeah, I would expect all those guys out there today. Mike, how did you enjoy your weekend? It was good. It was good. Good to get to Foxborough. It's good not to get booed. Going back there. Mike, you, you made a, a comment during all that that's kind of getting parsed here, talking about. Who's respect. parsing it, Gentry? I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, then ask the question, Jared. What well, question? Do, when you said that other organizations don't do things as well as the Patriots, and that you know because you've been there, were you referring to they, this organization? They've, they've won six Super. They won six Super Bowls in 20 years. That's what I was alluding to. You know what I mean? I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's just extreme, extremely, extremely, um, you know, a, a lot of success. And, uh, you know, and I guess just probably having talked to, you know, Bill and, you know, Mr. Kraft and the coaches I know they're on staff, I guess that was just my way of, uh, you know, bringing, bringing them good luck on, on Sunday. No, I mean, that just – the amount of success that they had there, that was the whole message was just for myself and the former players and everything, just to not take things for granted. You know, and just the, um, because, you know, I got traded myself and you went to a, you know, a team that went six and 10. And it was like, you know, where you're, you're just trying to find ways to win other than knowing that you're going to win when you show up. It was my whole intent of saying that, that, you know, they've 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 had it pretty good there for for 20 years, and six Super Bowls and however many else they they went to. That was it. that was it, Jared. So appreciate you. You'll you'll never think like me, Jared. We're never we're nothing alike. So 
<laughs> you well, smart or not smart? No, yeah, I'm not. I'm the dumbest person in here. No, no. I promise you. I guarantee you I'm the dumbest person in here. But we will never think alike in anything that we do. So if you ever want to think how I'm thinking, just think the just think the opposite. <laughs> think, think, think like a dude, think like an athlete, think like a grown man, and, and then you'll think how I'm thinking. On a, on a lighter note, we, that wasn't light enough for you? <laughs> on a different note, we, we talked about the whistle. Um, before, yeah. before you got here and had the head coaching whistle, when's the last time you had a whistle? Was it weird to coach I without think, a whistle? I think it was at Ohio State. I think it was with Urban Meyer because it was like 120 people basically just smashing into each other for three hours. And so for the sake of safety, I think everybody had a whistle at those spring practices. I think we used to run 150 reps every Saturday. And it was like, here, you get a whistle in case somebody gets close to the street. You get a whistle. You get a whistle. I think that's the – I didn't have one in, in Houston. I don't recall. I don't I don't I, – I've never even really – I just say stop or if they get to, you know, I mean, again, player safety is always paramount, making sure that the areas around the drills and everything that we're doing, that we have space, that we have room. So, you know, but we also are probably a little tighter and then you start blowing whistles. And I've noticed that on different fields, like guys will stop when we try to do some of the two spot stuff. And so I'm conscious of that as well. Got here was it automatic too, or did you have to take some time to sort out? I don't even. I I promise you, I don't remember. Joey gave me one and gave Auk one for the special teams. With B. John Robinson uh, th- this week, obviously, <clears throat> you know he's a feature back. Him specifically, what's the challenge that you guys face? Well, with? he's really um, explosive. He's smooth. He chain. He runs with different speeds and paces, so it's kind of like set up. Puts his foot in the ground. He's got great balance. Uh, good vision. Algier uh, runs as hard as any any back in the league. And then obviously Patterson um, has got some special plays on tape, just his skill set, his, his length, his speed, and, you know, his power. Um, you know, he, he's run plenty of guys over, and he's outrun uh, plenty of guys as well. And he just catches it really well. You know what I mean? Bijan just catches it really well. Um, they're, they're building in – you know, concepts for them. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, one thing you look at, I get going away from, from the line of scrimmage is easy to, probably easier to catch the ball, but, you know, sometimes he'll run full speed, um, a one step, you know, dart route and, and, and run through the catch and, and keep going, which, you know, isn't, isn't easy for, for anybody, let alone a, a running back. Mike, was there a thought around here about, the team asked KB to take a pay cut. KB ends up taking the pay cut. And he said when he took it that it was because he was thinking about his legacy and his roots here and everything else. And then the team traded him away anyways. Was there a thought about approaching future discussions with guys about taking pay cuts, about doing things for the team, and then still being treated in a way perhaps that they're not open to by the team and a fear of what that may mean going forward? I, mean, I think we're always, you know, conscious of what what things look like going forward we we want to have a great relationship between um our organization with um with amy with the personnel with the coaches and and the players like it's a whole it's a whole group and and we have to all function and, and work together and there's going to be things that happen along those different places that you know we're all going to have to deal with. We're going to have to, you know, whether it's a trade or we have to release a player or we can't sign a player back or, you know, there's going to always be things. And so we're always going to try to still make a connection with the players. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, the, the business side of it um, you know, may get in the way of that. Is the plan still to keep Kyle Phillips at punt return? And if so, Coach, how many chances do you get w- when you're making the same mistake? Well, we're going to try to get as many you know, guys that we can look at this week. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where we are on Sunday with, with the punt returner and, you know, some other options at other places. Picking up on that broadly, how long does practice success 
get you game chances if they're not performing in game? Yeah, and ultimately we have one test a week. You know, we we get one test and we have to uh, we have to start doing better on the test, and we can't. You know, we can't do really well on one section of the test and then, you know, bomb the next part and then do really well and then bomb the next part. And so, um, yeah, you have to perform. You get you get one opportunity a week and, and that's the test and you have to perform. So we'll have to we'll have to look at everything as as we try to combine the, the 48 guys for Sunday. You said you were going to investigate the communication about him fielding that punt what, what I, I've, your investigation I've told, conclude? yeah I've told you that you know I mean we that 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 should be um you know we don't need to to have him out there we don't need to have Kyle you know you know it would have been best just to not have him out there Why and and that? well again that 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 falls on me um I I have to make sure that we're communicating the situation uh and, and saying hey it's not going to do us any good but we also have to, like I said, both things can be true. We, we also have to catch punts. We, we, whether we're on the 10-yard line and there's 10 seconds or there's, we're on the 30-yard line and there's three minutes, like we, we have to be able to go and have the confidence to, to catch punts. But situationally, um, I, I need to be better and, uh, and, and make sure that gets communicated to everybody. Thanks, Thanks guys. Yeah, Kevin, I mean, that's my brother for life. No matter if he's here anywhere else. I mean, obviously I want him here, but the, that's the business side of football. Um, I wish him all the best. Um, you know, some guys got to step up um, into his role. Um, I think the best safety ever play here. Um, a great leader, a great teammate, um, a great pro. And, um, you know, I wish him all the best, his family the best. But at the end of the day, that's my brother. So, you know, we'll still be in contact and he's not going to change. You know, just he's somewhere else now. Do you feel like this organization? Do you feel like this organization is going for it this year when it's trading away one of its best players? I don't know. Have you asked the coach? You talked to coach and everybody else. He said, uh, on that question and a leadership question, we should <clears throat> maybe go to the locker room. Um, I mean, my goal is still to win, do my job the best way I can, help us win, and and that's what I'm going to do. You've been around a while, so you, you know it's a business. Does it get any less shocking though? Say it again? You know this is a business, and, and you know this stuff happens, but when you see a guy like KB go, does it get any less shocking to you? I mean, somebody you've been teammates with since you came in the league, I mean, it's always going to be shocking. But at the end of the day, we, we, we know it's a business. I mean, I just wish the best for him, if, if, if anything. But at the end of the day, um, we still got a job to do. Still got to come in and focus and um, do what you need to do. To help win games. Does it lead some other guys, even yourself, Derek, wondering like if, if Kevin can be traded? Is it possible that other guys get might get moved before the deadline as well? Yeah, man. Until I'm told different, focus on winning and um, beating the Falcons, and that's just my main focus. Until I'm told something different. Where you can win a Super Bowl. Have I said anything like that? No. So would you not want to go somewhere to win a Super Bowl? I'm here. I'm here here at work, ready to go practice and focus on beating the Falcons. Derek, anything else? I can't worry about. Sorry about that. As a leader on this team, are you concerned about how other guys will take this move, how they will view it? Um, no, not 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 really. I think it's just guys need to step up. Um, I think guys want to win, and that, that that should be the main focus, and getting better and improving, and coming out to practice and working hard today, making each other better, and then getting getting through the week and trying to win on Sunday. So you have a move like this that's so, so shocking. Like, how much can that be something that you guys can kind of circle the wagons and rally around? Yeah, I think just guys who are the leaders on this team just need, just need to step up. Um, everybody just stay close um, um, and you know, still have that brotherhood, continue to work, um, and, just, and just be us. Um, don't get too overwhelmed on any situation. Focus on the task at hand. And then go out there and play outside of the football. Kind of been a world, been a whirlwind. Did you get a chance to talk to him? And if, if so, maybe would you tell him, or maybe would you text him? Um, I didn't really get to talk to him too much. I just texted him, told him I wish him all the best. Uh, say travels are gonna be great. Is it fair, Derek, for, for you guys to have the same expectations when kind of one of the cornerstone of the, the the team has been has been moved? Should there still be the same expectations for the for the team? Um, I mean, it's a business side of football. Um. You know, you never want to see um, one of your leaders, one of your captains, um, 
one of the guys who's been a great player for the organization for a long time. Go like that. But at the end of the day, it's a, a grown man business. You still got to come to work. <clears throat> you still got to um, go out there and do your job the best way you know the, the best way you know you you can, and go out there and try to win games as a team. I don't think nobody is in the mindset of losing every game. Nobody wants to do that. I think it's just taking it week by week and focus on the task at hand and getting better and letting it show on Sunday. Mike Eric is going to be left tackle one today. In Say it again? Mike said that Petit Frere will be left tackle one today. But just talk about that change and what he meant in, when he came in that last game for you guys. Yeah, I'm excited for Nick. Excited to have him back. I thought he did a great job um, when he got in there. Um, we played in London, um, played with some intensity. So excited to have him back and excited to see what he does. And get get his opportunity. Like if Ryan can't go, maybe be Will and Malik playing. Maybe what, what what's your confidence level in those guys? How you think they could handle it? Yeah, I mean I'm confident in both. Um, you know I'm sure they're excited to get an opportunity um, to showcase what they have. Um, Malik got in there in in London, and then you know get an opportunity to to get some reps and practice throughout this week. Then so they're ready for Sunday. Um, I mean anybody should be excited to have a, have opportunity to play in the NFL. You know it's a a dream for all of us, so let's go out there and showcase and let's play some ball and play our solid football and try to go get a win. When the front offices quit on you with the move to, to move on Kevin as the players that are trying to win that the front office doesn't believe in what maybe you guys believe? That's a question for them. I'm just focusing on my job. Mike, as a player, how he would feel, and he said that he wasn't going to speak for the players about how the front office. Well, I can't speak for the front office. So. How about like, the move the front office made and whether or not you guys feel like they have any belief in you? Um, I mean, I'm going to believe in myself if, if, if nobody does. I'm confident in myself, confident in the way I work. I'm sure every guy feels the same way. And then we're confident in each other. Um, you know, that's just how I've always been. I'm sure guys think the same way. Um, I think nobody – Nothing that happens is going to sway anybody from their confidence and how they feel they are as a player. I think everybody just focus on getting better and then see where it takes us. Derek, you talked about earlier um, how you know, all the leaders just need to step up. For you individually, what does that look like for you portraying on, on, on the rest of the team? Like, how can you step up? How can I keep doing my job the best way I know how and by, by the way I work and just continue to be me? When you look at errors, especially like this one specifically, running backs, I mean, statistically, you're pretty much at the top of everything. Is that something that you take personally, being the best running back in this era that you're playing? Um, I mean, as a kid, you know, playing the position, any position you play, you, you definitely want to be somebody that made an impact and um, did great things along, along the way, along your career. And, um, you know, I just try to do that the best way I know how by – how I play and um, people can consider that for me and that's a blessing but at the end of the day I'm still I'm still working still got a lot I want to accomplish you know with this team and you know um, and, and things that we want to do and you know I'm just going to continue to to do my job the best way I know how and then see where it is at the end of the day. I know you said personally when it's all said and done you want to be in the Hall of Fame but is that something you think about every day is that like a day-by-day -day process that goes into whether it's your preparation, your, your working out, recovery, what what happens? Yeah, no, 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 not really. I don't really try to think too much about it and try to get caught up, um, caught up in it. Um, but whatever God has for me, I mean, that's that's for me. What's gonna be for you will be for you. I truly believe that. And I think that as long as I continue to work and you know have that mindset of wanting to get better each and every day and each and every year and um, playing the best way I know how and. Um, continue to do those things, then, you know, whatever is supposed to happen will happen. But at the end of the day, not too pressed on, you know, anything like that. And you look at this week, you guys are facing the Falcons. B. John Robinson has said that you're no doubt a Hall of Famer. You say you're somebody that he's watched since middle school. In the reverse, what do you think about his game? Oh, yeah, I think he's um, – um, as good as advertised, maybe even better. I think he is um, a special one. I think Atlanta got a special one. I feel like he can do it all. Um, you know, he's been been playing out of his mind. I know he had the little the head thing this this past weekend, but he's a great player. Was a great player in college, um, and um, be good to uh, you know meet him in person. Get to talk to him. But um, don't wish he had the best day uh, on Sunday. So. You've talked a lot about it keeping your mindset right with all that's happened with this team in the last year or so is it getting tougher to keep your mindset where you want it to be or is it still kind of come natural no i'm continuing to be me 
no no matter what. Um, that's what got me here. That's what, that's what got me this far. So I'm just going to stay in the middle and keep focusing on what I need to focus on. With the next three on the road, how, how much is this one a must win for you guys? Oh, yeah, we definitely want to win. We have one, what, two or three weeks. So this, this is definitely a, a, a must win. Um, and um, it just starts today at practice and through the week. But, you know, we definitely want to want to win this one. It's been a while since we've been in the win column. And Derek, at this point when you reach the bye week, do you get away from <clears throat> football to reset the mind and body, or do you kind of look back at some things and continue to keep football like in the mix during that time? How do you go about that? Uh, I watch football all weekend, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bam, and we'll watch watch some of the games. You know, I, I just chill, um, just relax. I mean, you can't get away from football when it's on TV all day, so. No, I watch football. What did you think about the game, by the way? Uh, uh, a little shaking up in the beginning, but we ended up playing our style um, at the end. And glad we were able to get in the win column. I didn't want to see any more goalposts or any more orange walking around here. So There's a, there's a kid that plays about an hour and a half from here, and they call him young Derrick Henry because mm -hmm. he plays for a little bitty school, 1A, mm -hmm. and he's about 6'3", 220. He's already run for close to 2,000 yards. Well, that's what's up. Have you heard anything about that? I haven't heard anything about it, but I think that's that's pretty cool. I'm gonna have to check him out. Um, his name of all things is Ben Franklin. What? What? what, what oh, damn. that's great. <laughs> that's great. What? Um, what year is he in school? I don't know. I think he's a, probably a junior. Senior. Okay, six three, two twenty. That's you, that's what's up. Have you crossed paths with Arthur at all? Been in touch with Arthur at all since he left here? I haven't talked to Arthur much, but um, I've been seeing the stash. I guess he got a new. You know, the new swag going on, so I talked to him about it after the game. Thumbs up or thumbs down on the stash? <laughs> I just see it in person. On TV, I'm still, I'm still iffy about it, but in person might look, look, might look a little better. <laughs> Derek, uh, Kevin, Kevin talked a lot while he was here about his legacy and what he wanted his legacy to be as a Middle Tennessee and as a Titans great. You're somebody who played your entire career with him and saw Kevin's development while he was here. What is Kevin's legacy to you? I mean... I think he's probably one of the greatest Titans to to play. Uh, I think his play and what he's done in the community and, you know, um, how he treats everybody in the building and around here, I mean, I think his, it speaks for itself. Um, he'll definitely be remembered around here and um, the impact he had on everybody around here. I think that's um, unprecedented. I think he's one of the greats, so I'm definitely going to miss him. But at the end of the day, still my brother no matter what. Um, obviously, it sucks, you know, losing a, a guy like that, a leader on this team, um, not just a defense. Um, he's been a guy that I admired when I first came into the league. Um, I looked up to him ever since I've been here, just as far as he carries himself on and off the field um, in the community. So it definitely um, hurts hurts our team losing him, but um, we got a job to do. What's the biggest thing you took from him? You trained a lot with him in the yeah. offseason. What did you take from him that's maybe – you be a better player? Um, I'd probably just say um, just being a professional, everything you do, um, even if through the ups and downs, you know, being a pro, um, you know, what that means is, you know, no matter how bad things get, you're always able to, you know, keep your head on and keep the vision, the vision, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing. So, um, I mean, he helped me out tremendously and, and several other things as well. Say it again. You feel like there's a little bit of a passing of the baton back there with him leaving now, though. Too? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like you know I'm a guy that's been here um, with Rabel for five years now. Um, you know, I'm the guy that's been here the longest in in the room, so I feel like you know as a leader of this team, I had to you know step up and fill that role along with other guys as well. In what ways does that leadership need to evolve now? Now that he's no longer there, you you have been a leader as you said, yeah. but. In what ways does that maybe change? Um, you know, more vocally, um, KB was a vocal leader for us. Um, he's always been. He's always been able to, you know, bring the room together. Um, he's always been able to um, keep guys in a positive mindset. So that's that's something that you know I had to bring bring to the table as well, and um, something that I've always been working on. What, what about on the field of mind? What's the loss there in terms of just obviously playmaking, but also yeah. pre-snap communication, all the things that he does for this team? Um, leader of the defense. Um, he's always been a guy that you can count on. Um, I don't think he's missed a game since you know, I've been here. So he's a guy that you can count on. He's a guy that you can trust. Um, that's all you look for when you're out there playing with somebody, you know, on the field. You know, is there concern at all in the, in the locker room that that maybe some other guys could be moved to with a, you know a week here before the the NFL 
after the deadline. I'm sure. I'm sure there's concerns. I mean, I'm. I mean, no one's feeling good right now. But I mean, talking with guys today, you know, guys are ready to to get to work. Guys are prepared to you know go out here and get a win versus Atlanta. Um, guys are ready to you know no matter what happens, we're gonna come come to work and show up. What do you know about Terrell Edmonds and what are your thoughts maybe some other guys in that safety group? Yeah, um, I know Trey Edmonds is a good player. Um, you know, he's moved around a couple of times, but you know, he's a guy that help us out a lot on on the defensive end. Um, and then Elijah Mole has been a, a guy that's that had a great camp along with Mike Brown. Um, and we got a, we have a good safety group that's guys that are willing to learn, guys that are smart, and guys that are athletic and can make plays. Mike was talking about how there's not one thing you guys can do to replace Kevin Holes. Right. So just in your mind, what are the things that need to be done to kind of replace what he did? Um, I think the best thing that we can do um, is just have good communication, um, have a good understanding of what the game plan is. You know, it'd be the first time that, you know, we've game planned without KB being here. So it'd be a little different in the meeting room. But um, like I said, we have a great group of guys that are smart f football players who love ball. So um, the void will, will have to be filled somewhere. Everybody still has a job to do. Both even Derek have essentially echoed that. Yeah. What is it that keeps you doing that job in light of what happened yesterday and what so many people think about this team right now? Well, we still have a, one goal, and that's to you know win the Super Bowl and get to the playoffs and um, give our t team the best chance to win. So um, I feel like just as a man, you got to go out there and not just for you know yourself, but for your teammates, for your family. You know you don't want to put nothing bad out there. So no matter what's going on. Um, you know the, what you put in this week and what you show on Sunday will always be the results that that you get. You, you think Super Bowl this season is still possible? For sure. I mean, we started off you know two and four before, and we went all the way to the AFC Championship. So, um, and guys, people were writing us off then, so people are writing us off now. So, we're going to continue to you know grind away at it. Is it, is it fair to have the same expectations when you move up, you know, kind of a franchise cornerstone like like Kevin, like that? Is it still? Fair to have the same expectations as with Bayard. Oh, yeah, no. for sure. I mean, obviously, it seems like no, no way. It seems like you know that's not that's not real. But I mean, you know, we're professional athletes. We're competitive. So, um, I mean, we're not going to back down from a challenge. That conviction that you have, what is the source of that? Where, where does that generate from? Um, just of what I've seen through, through our guys. Um, we haven't put the best uh, stuff on film yet, but I know what we can do. I know the players that we have. So, um, for me, I, I do just got to put together and just put a good, clean game together and get a win. With the next three on the road after this, how critical does that make Sunday for you guys? Is your season on the line? Uh, I think every game season's on the line at this point. I mean, every every week we got to look at it as you know, zero and zero, and because um, you know you never know what could happen. So every game we got to take an approach as you know this is a, this is the game of the year all the way until you know the, the final end of the game uh, end of the season. Talk to KB or text with them, or he leave you any parting wisdom or anything like that. Yeah, I, uh, I talked to him yesterday a little bit. Um, just you know, sent him farewell. Appreciated everything that he's done for for me and my career, and um, just wish him the best. And I know he's going to take advantage of it. How surprised were you by this news? Um, very surprised. I mean. For me, that's the, the mayor of Murfreesboro. So, I mean, I didn't think he was going anywhere, but that's the nature of the business. Um, that's that's what we all signed up for. No matter how personal, you know, these relationships are, whether it's player to player, player to coach, it's a business. And, you know, that's that's what's great about the NFL and also kind of some people don't like about it. What's what kind of the vibe inside the locker room when that, when something like this happens? Um, initially, it's, you know, it's not good because KB is a friend to everybody. So um, KB was a teammate to everybody. He was somebody that, you know, if you had any questions about where to go, what to do, whether it's in Nashville, in the facility, um, he could point you in the right direction. Um, but like I said, guys are, are here ready to work. Um, guys see the opportunities that they have. They're excited um, and we're ready to, you know, take on Atlanta. A sudden change like that, is that something that you guys can, especially like in a DB room, come together and rally around? Yeah, um, you know, we hear all the noise um, about, you know, KB's gone, you know, the room's going to be, you know, if he's going to be this and that, um, but you know, we got like I said, we got guys in the room that you know love that love ball, understand ball. Um, KB did as much as he could as teaching guys, you know, the aspects of you know the game, whether IQ, whether it's just the physicality part of it. So I think guys are going to take what he you know what he learned or what he taught us and apply it. Have you or any other players addressed the team as a whole? Has there been? Point where you guys spoke to each other like that, or is it been more individual stuff? Um, we haven't got to that point where we had to, you know, bring us together. I mean, we, we do often, you know what I mean? It wasn't like a whole team thing. Like, um, sometimes offense will, you know, do their thing. I'm not sure what they do, but defense will we'll have a talk as a full defense, you know, throughout the week about, you know, what's going on. Frazier hasn't addressed everybody yet altogether? No, not yet. That should probably happen today. Yeah. Do you kind of strategically, uh, Amani, in terms of, you know, the, the role that you play out there, you know, would you take up some of Kevin's responsibilities you know, um, positionally in 
and so forth? I guess we'll find out today. We haven't we haven't officially started yet. Um, I'll probably know more going into the end of the week, but I'm pretty sure um, uh, some, someone's going to have to step up. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey uh, Simmons, when you guys were in London, he had said, you know, guys got to look in the mirror. They got to find out. You guys have to find out who wants to be here, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You hear those comments. How did you take that? And what did you do as far as looking yourself in the mirror and looking at other guys like, hey, man, yeah. do you want to be here or not? Yeah, I mean, it just comes down to, you know, being a man, being professional and, you know, being an NFL football player. Are you just going to back down, tuck your tail just because things are going wrong and not going your way? Or are you going to, you know, come out, compete, improve and not listen to the noise and just go out there and win a game?